Hi, I'm Mercy, and welcome to the one place where we try to answer all your science-related questions. It's the one-stop science shop. Let's see who has a question today. It's Nikolai from Berlin. He writes, My friend has sent me a strange blank piece of paper. I think there's a secret message somewhere. Any suggestions? I think I know what's going on here, Nikolai. I'm gonna help you decode your secret message, especially with a chemical reaction. Before we solve the mystery of the blank sheet of paper, let me show you how to make your own invisible ink. I have juice from three or four lemons, some water, candle, cotton buds, and a matchbox. This one involves fire, so make sure to have an adult around. Firstly, I'm gonna take one teaspoon of water and add it to the lemon juice. Mix it well. Now using the cotton swab as my pen, I'm gonna write my secret message. Wait for the juice to dry and become invisible. How can you read the secret message? It's just a blank sheet of paper. I'm gonna light my candle and bring my secret message close to the candle slowly. Make sure there is a good distance between the flame and the paper. As the heat touches the paper, the letters start appearing. And here's my secret message. I love One Stop Science Shop. Lemon juice is a mild acid. When poured on paper, it remains absorbed even after drying. When one holds the paper close to heat, like a candle or a lamp, the acid will show up again by turning brown. This process is called oxidation, which is a good example of a chemical reaction. I hope Nikolai can now decode this message. To try this at home for yourself, have a look at what you need. Lemon juice, some water, candle, cotton swabs, matches, paper. Now that you know the secret, I wonder who you're gonna send your secret messages to. Oh, I think someone got my secret message. Let's find out who. What a beautiful place to be in. Hey. Hi. Come on in. Welcome to the One Stop Science Shop. My name is Mercy. Who are you? I'm Rishita. What brings you to the One Stop Science Shop today? We are starting to learn about the periodic table in chemistry. I wanted to learn a little of its history and origin. The periodic table is the very basis of chemistry. It's really complicated and I have enough trouble remembering all my mathematic tables. I can imagine, but I think I can help you with your table phobia. Why don't we have a look at one of the most organized In 1834, and was alleged to have had between 11 and 17 older siblings. The exact number is historically uncertain, but whatever it was, that's a lot of beds. Mendeleev was a promising student. By the age of 20, despite suffering from tuberculosis, he had started publishing original research papers.
suddenly realize that by arranging these cards in order of increasing atomic weight, that certain types of element regularly occurred. He arranged his table so that element groups with similar properties fell into vertical columns. He also left gaps where he predicted as yet undiscovered elements could be expected to find their place. Over the next two decades, his periodic table gradually gained acceptance and most of his predictions regarding missing elements were proved correct when they were discovered through scientific research and experimentation. He received a multitude of honorary awards for his discoveries. Mendeleev died in February 1907. At his funeral in St. Petersburg, his students escorted him on his final journey, carrying copies of the periodic table of elements as a tribute to his incredible life's work. So it's high time we take our dreams seriously. It sure worked for Mendeleev. Marcy, can I ask you what exactly an atom of mass is? Atoms are made of three subparticles, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Atomic mass is the collective sum of all the three. I've got a great fact for you connected to Mendeleev's periodic table. Which element is Argentina named after? Okay, I give in. It is named after element silver known as Argentum in Latin. I never knew that. Thanks for telling me. Now, elements like silver are chemical substances and they can occur naturally or are man-made. When a chemical substance changes into a new one, it's called a chemical reaction. Are you interested in watching one chemical reaction? Here? Now? Yes, right here and right now. Okay. Do you want to see what's inside our one-stop science box? Yes. First of all, we'll lay out the mat. Um, nothing. Okay, here you go. Some flour. Six cups of flour. Some salt. Two cups of salt. Some water. That's two cups of warm water. The good soap. Here you go. What's this? That's vinegar. making the dough softer and easier. Do you want to try? dry. I think our volcano is ready. What you didn't know was there was a dormant volcano lying under the mountain. Wow! What will happen if it becomes active? Let's find out. We're gonna take the baking powder, put coloring, about one teaspoon. You can put in any color and about six drops of liquid salt. We're gonna mix vinegar and red food coloring in this beaker. Again, you can use any color you like. Roughly a cup of vinegar. Now, watch the volcano erupt. Rishita, are you excited? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Come. Ooh. Wow, this looks so real. But how did it happen? The lava is the result of a chemical reaction. This is when two or more chemicals interact and either produce one or more new chemical compounds or alter the properties of the mixed chemicals. The original substance changes into a new one that has a different chemical identity. In this case, there was a reaction between the baking powder and the vinegar. 
the mixture thus produces carbon dioxide gas which bubbles out of the volcano. The addition of liquid soap also helps make the lava really foamy. To try this at home, let me go over what you need. A mat, six cups of flour, two cups of salt, two cups of warm water, oil, liquid soap, vinegar, food coloring, baking soda, paint, paintbrush, a funnel, wooden spoon, an empty bowl, a cup, and a tray. Thanks, Mercy. It was fun to be here. The volcano eruption makes a really good science project. I'm so glad. It's my pleasure. And the best part about this is you don't even have to go to the mountains to see it. I hope I will get to visit the one-stop science shop again soon. I hope so too. Whether it's decoding secret messages or creating your own volcano, chemical reactions are good to know. Unfortunately, that's all we have for you today, but hope to see you again soon at the one and only One Stop Science Shop.